moderator today. I do have a couple quick housekeeping items to go over before we get started on the webinar. First, we are recording this webinar and it will be available tomorrow at livewellcolorado.org in the LiveWell toolbox and also available on the Colorado Farm to School website and the Colorado Department of Agriculture website. Second, we will have time for Q&A at the end of the webinar today. To ask a question, simply type it into the control panel on your screen. If your question is directed at a specific panelist, please note that when you type it in. And finally, at the end of the webinar, we will display a URL to an online survey. We'll also email this link out tomorrow. We would really appreciate it if you would take five to seven minutes and let us know what you thought of the webinar and also help us identify topics for future webinars. So with no further ado, I'd like to pass this over to Lisa Walbord to get us started. Thank you, Shannon, and thank you to everyone for joining today's call. Live Well Colorado is really pleased to be hosting this, um, the first in this series of webinars with our partners, Colorado Farm to School, the Colorado Department of Agriculture, and the Farm to School Task Force. And really the objective of this webinar series is to promote and inspire Farm to School in Colorado. Um, Live Well Colorado's mission is to prevent and reduce obesity across the state of Colorado. And um, where this ties into Farm to School is really that we want to make the healthy choice the easy choice in the places that we live, work, study, and play. And as we think about how we can do this most effectively, we see the school environment as really our highest priority. And Farm to School is one of several important strategies to get Colorado children eating healthy foods in school every day. And other initiatives that we have going on that complement this and are within our Freshen Up School Food Initiative, which you can find on our website at livewellcolorado.org slash school food. And they include Go Slow Well, which helps to encourage children what are those healthier foods to be eating. Eat Well at School, which is a training program for high schoolers. Um, our culinary boot camps, which train um, kitchen staff within schools how to, how to cook from scratch. And we do school food assessments to help um, on the school operations side understand how schools can make improvements. And we're in the process of training still more chef instructors and mobile chefs to help further this movement. But it really is um, a multi-pronged approach and it takes all the partners that are on this call and um, probably those of you who are listening in um, to get this work done. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Jim Dyer, who's going to talk a little bit more about um, why we're doing the webinar. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Jim Dyer from far southwestern Colorado outside Durango. We raise sheep and uh, lamb and wool on a small scale and have sold to schools, but I have to admit the uh, lamb we sold was a very small amount that isn't caught on in this school yet. I work on a variety of farm to school and local food efforts with a variety of groups, uh, Southwest Marketing Network, Healthy Community Food Systems, and others including the Colorado Farm to School Project, which is uh, one of the partners on this uh, webinar today. And we're very uh, pleased to be partnering to bring this and hopefully future webinars to you. Uh, Colorado Farm to School project uh, arose from a Colorado Department of Agriculture specialty crops grant uh, to help support farm school in Colorado. And in a nutshell, you can see the resources we have and what we're doing on our website at coloradofarmtoschool.org. This particular webinar is very timely with Colorado Proud School Meal Day coming up on the 14th of September. And many of you, I'm sure, are aware of this, but it's a time to feature Colorado products and hopefully ones within Colorado and very close by as well. Uh, the two specific objectives for the webinar are to help those who are new to Colorado Proud, who have not heard about it or heard much about it or have not done it before, to find out how to feature these products and get uh, the support from the Colorado Department of Agriculture for some of the outreach activities. And second objective would be for those who have done Colorado Proud School Meal Day in the past but would like to increase the uh, increasingly take advantage of the opportunities for education within the school and outside the school about farm to school, local products, local farmers, local food. And who better than to help us understand uh, that support from the Colorado Department of Agriculture is Wendy White, who's the director of Colorado Proud. Wendy? 
Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm really excited to have such a great group of, of people attending the webinar today. And it's really appropriate that uh, we're having a Colorado Proud School Meal Day webinar on August 1st, which is Colorado's 135th birthday. And it's also the start of Colorado Proud Month, as proclaimed by Governor um, Hickenlooper. So this is really great that we can have this on a very um, celebratory day. And as Jim mentioned, I'm with the Colorado Department of Agriculture. I'm a marketing specialist and help promote local products. And I've been with the department for 11 years. And about eight years ago, we came up with the uh, Colorado Proud School Meal Day. And you may be wondering why uh, the Colorado Department of Agriculture is interested in promoting local products. And uh, it's really based on a, a lot of research that we've done over the last several years. We know that 92% of Colorado consumers would buy more locally grown and produced products if they were available and if they were identified as being from Colorado. And uh, we also know that 84% of people purchase at least some Colorado products. 57% are looking for the Colorado Proud logo more now than they used to. And 68% are very or somewhat familiar with the Colorado Proud logo. And that's up from 59% in 2008. So we're really excited uh, with the increase in awareness of the Colorado Proud program and logo the last several years. For those of you who may not be familiar with Colorado Proud, it is a program of the Colorado Department of Agriculture. We established it in 1999, and it's a free marketing program that helps consumers, restaurants, schools, retailers uh, identify and purchase Colorado food and agricultural products. Currently, we have more than 1,500 members in the program, and that includes producers, processors, restaurants, retailers and associations as well. So that's grown quite a bit over the last several years. Uh, the increase in membership, I think, has to do a lot with the increase in awareness of, of buying local products, not just within Colorado, but nationwide as well. A little bit about last year's Colorado Proud School Meal Day. Uh, we had more than 200 schools participate. We reached nearly 60,000 schools, uh, students, and more than 40 chef demos and producer presentations were given on uh, Colorado Proud School Meal Day last year. So that was obviously our, our biggest uh, year uh, to date. When we first started, we only had a few schools participate, and we reached um, quite a few students even the first year. But we were really excited about the results from our 2010 effort. A little bit about the 2011 event. Governor John Hickenlooper has proclaimed September 14, 2011, as Colorado Proud School Meal Day. So that's the day that we're encouraging uh, all of our schools to use local ingredients in their menus and uh, educate students about agriculture in their school and classrooms. And it is our eighth annual event, so we've tried to start small and grow it every year. We do have an order form on our website at coloradoproud.org. You can click on the link that says Colorado Proud School Meal Day for access to uh, the order form in addition to a, a lot of resources that are available. We have printable fact sheets, we have menus and recipes, the Colorado Prop Calendar, in both English and Spanish. So we try to make it one-stop shopping for you for all the materials you need to help make Colorado Proud School Meal Day a success in your school. We've also partnered with various industries to offer materials which are available on the order form. The Colorado Beef Council helps us with the beef bookmark. Uh, the Dairy Association has uh, materials available. Uh, the um, Colorado Foundation for Agriculture offers their Colorado Reader as well. So we try to have those materials, and they're all free of charge. So why is it so important to educate uh, our kids about agriculture and to host Colorado Proud School Meal Day? We really want to connect kids with ag. Uh, so many of our families are many generations removed from a family farm, and we want to bring that back so we can educate them about where their food comes from. And uh, we also want to support our local producers and the state economy. Our tagline for Colorado Proud is better for you, better for Colorado. So by buying locally, it's better for you, it's spending less time in transportation, but it's also better for the state. Uh, we're helping our state farmers and ranchers as well as our, our state's agriculture industry and our overall economy. Agriculture in the state contributes nearly $20 billion to the state economy every year. And we're also edu uh, connecting school with schools with local communities. I think it's an important uh, way that we can help uh, connect those schools with the uh, businesses and producers in their immediate area. And these are just a few pictures from previous um, Colorado Proud School Meal Day activities. You can see we have some chef demonstrations and some of the marketing materials. Uh, the center panel there is from Denver Public Schools. They did a really nice job on, on using the Colorado Proud logo in their materials. 
And you know, it's really possible for you to start small if you want to do um, you know, just a one chef demo maybe in one school the first year and then grow to more schools or try to include more ingredients in your menus that are local. Um, so we can really help you with, uh, with uh, meeting your needs for hosting this event. But it is also a good way to start the Colorado Farm to School effort in your school and district as well. If you don't know how to start the Farm to School Connections, Colorado Proud School Meal Day can be one way to do that. And these are just a few more pictures of some of the, uh, some of the past events. And the schools really get into it in promoting Colorado Proud, so that's great. I just wanted to review some of the resources. And again, you can visit coloradoproud.org and click on Colorado Proud Meal Day for, um, for access to a lot of these resources. And we also, in addition to the resources available, I send out a press release announcing Colorado Proud School Meal Day and invite the media to attend many of the chef demos and producer presentations. So we also try to help schools get some publicity and media attention for their participation in the event. So our first resource is the Colorado Farm Fresh Directory. Many of you may be familiar with this publication. This 2011 is the 27th annual edition, and it lists farms and ranches that sell direct to the public. It also lists all the farmers' markets across the state and has the crop calendar. And we have the, uh, this year's Farm Fresh directory available at coloradoagriculture.com. This is one resource that you may not be familiar with, but we are trying to do more to educate people about its availability. It's Colorado Market Maker, and the website is comarketmaker.com. And we've really developed this in partnership with Colorado State University to make it the online resource for finding local products and connecting of consumers, restaurants, retailers, schools with our local producers. So it really can do a lot. You can search by farmer, or you can put in a zip code and find uh, farmers in your area, or you can search by product or by county. So it's really a great tool to help you connect with local producers. And one website that just went live this morning is the cofarmtomarket.com. And this is really geared towards uh, our producers who are looking to direct market their products and want to understand sort of the rules and regulations maze that exists out there. And this is a, a tool to help them through that and understand the state's uh, local and federal regulations that may be up, you know, applied to their, their particular product. So uh, we also have the farm to school resources on that as well. So I might encourage you to check that out too. And one final resource that we have is the gap gift program, the good agricultural practices and good handling practices. It is a voluntary audit uh, verification program through, for the fruit and vegetable industry here in Colorado, and it's um, our, our office in Monta Vista Fruit and Vegetable Inspection Program manages that. So if there are producers who are interested in having this voluntary certification, uh, we can help arrange that as well. And uh, with that, I just listed some of our websites. I went through those pretty quickly, but they're here on the slide, and they'll be uh, available as of tomorrow. But I just want to thank you for your time and I want to introduce uh, Sandy Van Houten with the Montezuma Cortez RE1 School District who's participated in Colorado Proud School Meals Day in the past and I'll turn it over to Sandy. Thank you Wendy. Um, needless to say we did Colorado Proud Day on seemed like the spur of the moment but it turned out great. The kids in the school loved it. And we had the chef at Mesa. Um, Shannon, are you clicking? Do I need to? Yes, just let me know when you want me to go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and click. Oh, this is what we served. We had Colorado beef in our Southwest macaroni, and we had corn on the cob from the Ute Mountain Farms, and applesauce cups from Wacky Apple. Um, and, of course, the wheat rolls were made with flour here from Cortez Milling and, of course, our milk from Grand Junction. Click. And so the, the chef that came from Mesa Verde National Park, he is the chef in the Matati room, and his name was Brian Pewitt, and he was great. And he worked really well with the kids. They loved him. And this is just a sample of what he had made to get the kids to taste different items. Of course, the black bean hummus was kind of iffy. They, <laughs> they weren't sure about that. But overall, they loved it. Next slide. And of course, the newspaper was there. And the kids, you know how kids are. They are so funny. 
when it came to um, asking them what they thought of it. Click. One kiddo says that she loved applesauce because it um, contained fruit. So <laughs> that was funny. But, but kids are so eager to learn about these different um, you know, local grown produce that we need to get it to them. Click. And because of this um, article in the paper, we have some farms down Lacalmo Canyon, and this Tom and Lita Hughes called me and said, you know, we would like to be a part of your local produce effort. You know, we've got watermelon. Can you use them? Sure, bring them up. So we purchased 600 pounds of watermelons and served them, I think, about two weeks later. And that turned out great. They delivered them here. We took them to the school really well. And so this year I'm going to try and get their watermelon again, hopefully, for Colorado Proud Day. Click. But some of the problems I ran into is it's very hard, and maybe I'm not looking in the right places, to get farmers to, you know, get me their produce. And I know Live Well Montezuma is trying to find a common person to say, Sandy, this farm has carrots for sale. Would you be interested in buying them? So I think now, it's, I think it's really going to come together this year. And I'm excited. I can't wait. Because like I say, the kids, I think, are ready for the change because they hear it, newspaper, television. Um, and they know that they need to start eating healthier. Um, and with that said, I will introduce Ann Wilson, and she is from the Denver Public Schools. Here you go, Ann. Thanks, Sandy. My name is Ann Wilson, as Sandy said, with Denver Public Schools. I'm an area supervisor, and I just want to talk a little bit about our Colorado Proud School Meal Day in a little bit larger school district. Uh, why is hosting a Colorado Proud School Meal Day so important? There were three main re reasons for Denver. The first reason is that educating children is so important, and food touches onto all areas of curriculum, the science of how plants grow, nutrition, geography, different areas in Colorado grow different things. Um, even math, calculating food miles or nutrients in food, or looking at the impact impact of ag on the Colorado economy. The second reason we thought it was important to host the Colorado Proud Day, like Wendy said, with fewer miles the food is traveling, um, quality tends to be better of the product. And the third reason, of course, is the economic benefit. Our parents um, work with these industries. They work in our present economy. They, Denver parents may not necessarily work on these farms, but they work in industries that support the farms, like processing and stuff like that. So they're very excited to be, um, we're purchasing the products that they've had a hand in. Our program began in September of 2009. We hosted our first Colorado Proud School Meal Day, and I think it was through a contact with Wendy that really encouraged us to get involved um, we did another Colorado Proud Day in September of 2010, and we um, started doing it monthly after that. So we had a monthly Colorado Proud menu, one day per month. The items that we got initially for the Colorado Proud Days, we actually put on the regular menu. They were so popular. The kids loved them so much. So it was really a wonderful way to expand our Colorado Proud meals beyond just Colorado Proud School Meal Day, although that's a great place to start. A lot of people wonder how you find vendors. Um, I think Sandy identified that as a challenge, finding Colorado products and finding farmers to work with. We were lucky. We had a grant from School Food Focus, <coughs> a wide group that helps big city districts procure, procure more healthy, more sustainable, and more local foods for their school meal programs. So with their help, we were able to learn more about Colorado vendors and products. But the real helper in our efforts was our community partner, Andy Nowak, who's a Slow Food um, member. He's also one of our parents, and he had a lot of connections with farmers um, in the area. So he was our biggest supporter. Since we started making some of the purchases, um, our purchasing decisions mid-year, 
last year, this was a pilot program, we were able to use a price agreement versus going out to bid, so that was kind of helpful too. So some examples of the things that we featured on our Colorado Proud menu. Um, the first one is Ready Foods. They did a wonderful vegetarian um, bean recipe for us. They actually used our recipe and produced it in quantity. The second thing um, that we really enjoyed having, and you'll get to hear from Mike, which is awesome, was ranch foods beef, and that's processed in Colorado Springs. We also got to use bison. Our director, Leo Lesh, was super excited about using bison, so we made that happen. Uh, that was a fun thing for the kids to learn about. Uh, we got produce items through our produce distributor, Andrews, and he sourced a lot of local stuff in and around Pueblo where his operation is. Um, a lot of items that we couldn't necessarily handle whole, like butternut squash, Mrs. Condi Salad Company helped us with that chopping to save time in the kitchen. Um, we got our pizza cheese from Laprino Foods, which is here in Denver, and Mission Foods supplied our tortillas. So those are some of the examples of things that we were able to use this year. Pictures. This is a picture of Mike Calicrate, who you'll hear from in a few minutes, and his beef was served on our menu this year. Bison, here's a picture of the bison that we were able to use for our Colorado Proud menu this year. The next picture shows our calabacitas um, using some local produce ingredients, and you can also see a burrito there with the green chili sauce. The green chili sauce was made by Ready Foods as well as the vegetarian beans, beans as well as onions in those, as well as a tortilla is from Mission, which is um, right here um, in the Denver area. How, what was our impact of Colorado Proud? It was huge. I had no idea until I looked at this, these numbers how well we had really done. Um, $349,000 spent on natural Colorado beef from Ranch Foods, $16,000 on bison, $304,000 um, just on the produce. And you can see we also spent a good deal on the green chili and the beans. This is not including the $815,000 we spent on dairy and the 110,000 pizzas we bought from Blackjack, which is also OK. Planning, so how do you plan a wonderful Colorado Proud Day? Um, you heard Sandy had some great um, menu ideas as well as a really good chef demo. And we did some of the same things. We also incorporated garden tours. So the, we had the kids actually lead the garden tours of the school gardens and talk about some of the produce that they are actually producing for us um, in the kitchen. We, of course, did chef demos, much like Sandy did, which is wonderful because it really, for a lot of kids, they don't think of chef as a career, but they see the chef demoing with these awesome Colorado items, and they really start thinking about career, careers in that industry. Um, we did signage, um, table decor, farmer visits to the classroom. Uh, we got some of the farmers that produced or grew some of our products to come out and speak to the students. And we also did some group plantings um, and harvest in the school garden. And here's some pictures. Here's our signage from Colorado Proud Day. You can see the line decor. The next slide is speakers. Um, we were able to get the Ag Commissioner through Wendy White, who is wonderful to work with, and she'll really help you find um, chefs to work with. She'll help you get signage. She's just great. So Wendy is the go-to person for Colorado Proud Day. Uh, you can see on the left there's a farmer. He, pro he supplied our um, watermelon. And in the lower right-hand corner, I just showed a, a dairy farmer with a calf. The Dairy Council has some wonderful resources for farm to school, and they will have dairy farmers come out and talk to your kids about dairy farming. And it's very accurate. As a dairy farmer's daughter, everything was spot on, and the kids loved it. So, And this slide just shows some group harvest planting. This is a great media um, poll when you have dignitaries come and, and harvest with the kids or maybe plant something with the kids for Colorado Proud. Um, a different additional sources of local produce that we got was from our school gardens. We had a special policy that allows us to buy from our school gardens, and it covers food safety and handling and that sort of thing. We're also looking at working with urban farms, farms that are um, located on school grounds we will be purchasing from this school year. Wish us luck. 
And then school greenhouses are also something we'll be working with this year to extend our season. This just shows a picture of the salad bar. Um, and this particular salad bar, most of the produce was supplied by the school garden. And my last slide just shows our awesome Denver kids harvesting from the school garden. So it can be done. It's very fun. And I'm going to turn it over to Mike Calicrate with Ranch Foods, who's going to talk about Colorado Proud from the vendor side. And thank you very much uh, for, for introducing me. And, and thanks, everyone, for inviting me to this webinar. I want to express how important this program is to the producer. Ranch Foods Direct is one of the few companies in America that is able to really connect the producer to the consumer outside of the industrial food system. We produce our cattle on the border of Colorado and Kansas. Denver is our closest urban center. It's 180 miles as opposed to Kansas City, which is 400 miles. So we selected Colorado Springs as a place to put our processing plant. Uh, we are producing cattle there on, on our ranch uh, from ourselves as well as neighbors uh, over on the Colorado side of the border as well as Nebraska and Kansas. And those animals then are slaughtered on site in the new mobile slaughter unit, which you'll see in a, in a, site, in a slide that will be coming up. Uh, before that, we were processing our cattle at GNC Packing Company here in Colorado Springs. So we built a, a plant here that takes it from the carcass to the ground beef, steaks, roasts, we have retail market here and also sell into about 110 different restaurant accounts. Uh, we think that the school lunch program is a very critical and key component of our process here. Uh, if, if you can't sell ground beef, which is most of what the, uh, an animal is, you, you simply can't do business. So school lunch has really been a big benefit to the growth of Ranch Foods Direct and, and our mission of raising income at the farm and ranch gate as well as feeding consumers the best possible food that we can. And we think about the Live Well Colorado really, really focusing on good child nutrition, but it has another component as well that's, that's critical, and that is when you deal locally, when you buy food from farmers, you are helping save these rural communities that are, that are dying. As it, as, uh, as it stands today under this uh, large industrial food system, which pays these farmers below their cost of production. So you're not only getting really good food from directly from those that produce it, but you're saving some of these rural communities uh, and, and have the potential to do much more of that as we perfect this relationship between school lunch and companies uh, like, like Ranch Foods Direct. Go ahead and change the slide. Just a, just a view of some of our Angus cattle. We, we breed our uh, cows to Wagyu bulls, which is where Kobe beef comes from. Uh, genetically, these animals have much healthier fat profile and, uh, and produce a carcass that is, that is uh, very high quality. Uh, and so coming locally, we're, we're able to uh, provide some good local ground beef from, from the absolute best quality genetics uh, that, are, that are known in, to the industry. Uh, change the slide, please. This is our a picture of the mobile meat processing unit, which is a demonstration unit uh, that comes out of Nebraska. It is currently being operated out of St. Francis, Kansas, at our cattle operation. This then uh, is allowing us to kill the animal, process the animal where it is. So we save freight on those animals uh, to Colorado Springs. We no longer have to ship them a long distance on a truck live, only the carcass travels, leaving behind 35% of the weight that we would have, uh, have otherwise paid the freight on. So from a health uh, food quality uh, perspective and a humane treatment perspective, it makes a really, really big deal to us. Go ahead and change the slide. This is a picture of our carcass cooler at Ranch Foods Direct where the carcasses are hanging. Uh, we have the capability here at this plant to fully process these animals all the way to, full, to retail packaging, uh, patties for gr uh, ground beef for schools, uh, various uh, restaurant accounts, uh, etc. Go ahead and advance the slide, please. This is a picture of Leona in our, in our uh, retail store here in Colorado Springs. The retail store is part of our processing plant. Uh, having access to the consumer directly greatly improves income. Uh, to the farm and ranch gate, which is what Ranch Foods is all about. Go ahead and advance the slide, please. 
this is a picture of our posters that we are putting in the District 11 schools here in Colorado Springs. District 11 is one of four school districts that we were able to provide meat to uh, last year, including the Denver Public Schools. And this is a, a way to reach the kids and let them really understand how our meat is different and, and how, how by supporting this, you're able to have a, a better product. You know, we always talk, talk about what we, what we uh, support prospers, what we feed grows. And I really think the change does come from the kids. Uh, I, I'm reminded of a conversation Katie Couric was having with Eric Slosser. Eric Slosser wrote the book Fast Food Nation. And she asked Eric, she said, when are people going to get it about better food? Eric says, I don't really think they are. But I think when the children tell their parents that they want to eat better food, when they, they don't want to eat fast food, that's when change will be effective. And so I think working through schools, through the school lunch program, to educate children and give them a taste of what really good food is all about, I think is, is really the key to, to making change. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, thank you, Mike. Uh, this is Lynn Kathleen, and I am uh, one of the people, along with uh, Jim Dyer and Wendy peters Muschetti, who's unable to be with us here today, that is working directly with the Colorado Farm to School Project. I would like to open it up now to questions and answers. Um, please feel free to type in your questions, and, uh, and it would be great if you have a specific person that you would like to direct it to, then please say that. Otherwise, we'll make our best guess as to who's the best person to answer. Do we have any questions yet? Shannon Fern. While we're waiting for some questions to come in, I just wanted to remind everyone that we are recording this webinar, so if you would like to review it again, or if you'd like to pass it on to some colleagues, it will be available starting tomorrow at livewellcolorado.org in the Livewell Toolbox, and also available on the Colorado Farm to School website and the Colorado Department of Agriculture website. And it looks like we have a question coming in. Lynn, do you want to go ahead and read it? I will. This question, um, comes from Carol Parker, and she's asking, can we work toward having Colorado Proud and integrating local be a year-round program? Who would like to take that? I, I'll take it. This is Wendy with the Colorado Department of Agriculture. And Colorado Proud, the program as a whole, is a year-round uh, program. We have a lot of producers who uh, manufacture food products here in Colorado that uh, aren't necessarily fresh but are part of the program, and we try to promote those on a year-round basis. Most of our advertising and, and public relations and promotions do occur in the summer months when we have uh, a lot of the fresh produce available, just because we do have a, a limited or non-existing budget to, for advertising, so we try to focus our efforts in the summer. Although I do have uh, some funds available that I will be actually developing a year-round campaign so we can make uh, more of an effort to promote Colorado products uh, around the holidays and the non-summer months as well, so we can keep Colorado Proud in the minds uh, of the consumers on a year-round basis. So we are working on that. Great. Uh, we have another question that has come in. Um, and this question uh, comes from Jennifer. And the question is, does local beef or animal product need to be processed by a certified USDA facility? Mike, do you want to take that? Yes, I sure can. In fact, uh, to, to sell into the school lunch program, to sell into the wholesale market or any of the restaurant markets, you do have to have those animals slaughtered in a U.S. inspected facility and further processed in, in a USDA inspected facility as well. Unlike uh, some of the uh, uh, locker plants that, that sell the animal directly to the consumer, uh, uh, you do have to have those inspected. So otherwise, uh, if you're selling direct to the consumer, uh, the consumer buys the animal, pays for the processing separately, then it can be done in a non-USDA inspected type facility, but not for school lunch. Great. Thank you very much. Um, we have a question from Hannah, and the question is, what procedures are in place to align Colorado local foods chosen with nutritional standards for children? Um, 
Ann. Sure, I'll take this one. So the Colorado foods we featured, of course, fruits and vegetables fit very well into the USDA school meals program. Obviously, we have to offer fruits and vegetables with the lunch program. As far as the beef, the fat content in the beef that we're using from Ranch Foods is better, if not at least the same standard as the commodity beef. So we've had that fits into our menu very easily and it's part of our analysis when we analyze our menus. Um, the beans that we use, they're vegetarian beans. Um, obviously, they don't use lard, so they're very low fat as well. Um, that was no problem. I'm just looking at some of the other things we use. Bison. Bison is a lean meat that fits very well into the school meals program. That's something else we analyze as part of our, our menu. Uh, we did garden chili, and we had local um, produce items in it. That's a vegetarian item. Again, it has beans, so it's very low fat. So there's really um, not been too many difficulties uh, with fitting that into our nutrient analysis and school meals program. Um, great, thank you, Ann. Um, Ann, can you tell us if your policy for purchasing from the school garden um, is on your website? The school um, garden protocol um, actually, that is not on our DPS website. That's something, a good idea. We should add that. Um, I would refer you to our community partner, Andy Nowak. And actually, um, they have a website for, for, the, for this and the protocols on there, as well as how to sign up. And I will post that after this session, because I don't have the exact website right here. And also, Andy's contact information, because he helped us develop the protocol. Andy Nowak with Slow Foods. Great, thank you. That sounds like a good resource to have. Um, another question in from Carol. Can Mike talk more about the mobile processing demonstration unit? Sure, I'd be happy to. That unit was built by a group out of Nebraska called the Environmental uh, uh, Action Network in, in, uh, out of uh, Ulysses, uh, Nebraska, headed up by Laura Krebsbach. If you want to know a lot more about that unit, go to MikeCalicrate.com. Uh, and click on the mobile meat processing uh, button there. And that's mobilemeatprocessing.com. We've got videos, pictures, uh, schematics of the unit itself. And basically what this is is a, is a demonstration unit to prove it can be done. And to prove it can also be done under USDA inspection. We've got our uh, USDA uh, certification at this point. We are yet now using the unit three days a week in St. Francis at our cattle operation, uh, our, we expect to, uh, the next unit that's, that's built will uh, come to St. Francis full time where we will then process every day of the week and have a full time inspector on board. Uh, so the, the mobile slaughter unit only works though with a further processing plant. The, the mobile slaughter unit only processes the live animal into the carcass. And then from there we move that carcass by way of a transfer trailer uh, that, that is a separate unit that is refrigerated and it hauls from the slaughter unit on up to Colorado Springs uh, for further processing. And so when we talk about the mobile unit being mobile, honestly it isn't all that mobile. We set it up, we, we uh, process animals as many as we can in one place and then we transfer the carcasses by way of a transport trailer to the processing plant. So it's very critical that the mobile slaughter unit be connected to a processing plant to add the value and the cut and wrap and further processing to that carcass. Great. Thank you, Mike. Um, Jennifer asks, is a HACCP plan required for local producers and are all rules and regulations on the ColoradoFarmToMarket.com site? And do you want to talk a little bit about HACCP and then sure. I'll take the second part? So HACCP is a requirement for school meal programs. They must have a HACCP plan from vendors they're purchasing from. Because we're getting most of our produce through distributor, Andrews Produce, they would have a HACCP plan on file, um, and they would handle any gap and gift from the producers they're buying from. They would have requirements for that. We have to have their HACCP plan, the distributor's HACCP plan, on file. Um, in addition, if you're buying direct, like Sandy talked about, uh, buying from Wacky Apple, and we have done that as well, then we would have to have um, written food safety policies from them covering gap and gip um, and things like that. The HACCP piece comes in play when you're transporting it or you're storing it, 
and for the farmers, it's gap and get because it's the good ag practices, the good handling practices, and that's what they have to comply with. But if you're getting from a distributor, you're looking at the half the plan more. And uh, in, your, in terms of your question about the CO Farm to Market website, uh, we've tried to put all of the rules and regulations as they pertain to direct marketing uh, for producers there. And the way it's designed is somebody can go online and select honey as the product that they're they're producing and selling, and the uh, applicable rules and regulations for that product will appear. So if we are missing something, we do have a contact us uh, link on the page, and you can type in something that we need to look at or add, and it'll be a work in progress. And as we go along, I'm sure there'll be changes and things that we continue to, to add as we go along. Great. Um, you know, uh, we got a little bit of a late start, but in the interest of ending the webinar on time, uh, and I also don't see any more questions coming in right now, I would like to just um, end by saying to everyone that we really appreciate you hanging in there for us to get going. There was a bit of a glitch, um, but I uh, hope that it was well worth the wait. Um, this is the first in a series of webinars from Colorado Farm to School, and our next webinar will be in late September. That information will be coming out probably in the next couple of weeks. It will introduce the Colorado Farm to School primer and will include a panel of experts to answer a wide range of questions that you might have about implementing or expanding your Farm to School program. I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar and our presenters in particular for providing the information and examples about how Colorado Proud School Meal Day um, can really jumpstart your Colorado Farm to School program. And I want to thank our sponsors, Live Well Colorado, the Farm to School Task Force, and Colorado Farm to School. I encourage you to go to the Colorado Farm to School website for a variety of resources um, that, uh, that include things we've talked about here today, as well as many others, and things that we will be covering in upcoming webinars. And then also the Colorado Proud website to get started on your Colorado Proud School Meal Day. And, and you should do that today. Um, get going on that one. Anyway, um, this is uh, just a reminder, too, that the webinar is being recorded. And it will be available tomorrow at three websites at LiveWell Colorado, the Colorado Farm to School, and the Colorado Department of Agriculture. We will also be sending out a follow-up email to everybody who registered today uh, that will include all the websites referenced in today's presentations as well as the questions and answers. And then finally, um, last, slide, slide, last slide please, finally I want one request from all of you, and that is we have a follow-up survey that would take, oh, say five to seven minutes for you to do. Uh, this survey will give us some feedback since this is the first in our webinar series. We're very interested in finding out, you know, how well did this work for you? Um, and in the future, we have a list that we've already um, started to brainstorm about, but we're interested to see just how much interest there is in each of those that we've thought about, as well as get your ideas on others. So if you could please copy and paste that survey link into your browser and take the time to take the survey, that would be great. You could do it right now. Or we'll also be sending out a follow-up email with the survey link if you would like to uh, just be reminded about that in the next 24 hours. So with that, I want to thank everyone for um, a great kickoff. And have a very good day. Thank you.